Hi guys, it's uh, Shay here, and today we're going to be learning about algebraic notations. Now, uh, to do anything uh, in algebra, you must be familiar with its notation. So whether you're uh, forming and solving equations or doing a complicated problem on a GCSE paper, um, you need to be very, very good at using uh, the correct, uh, using and recognizing the correct uh, algebraic notations. Now, a uh, couple of key words that we need to understand. So algebra uses letters to represent unknown values. Now, these letters are known as variables. So in essence, variables um, are commonly represented as X and Y. So that's the convention. I mean, we could use any letter uh, to represent a variable, but usually um, in algebra, we use X and Y. Uh, so is a letter which represents a number we don't know yet. So let's think about this box of chocolates. Um, we don't know exactly how many chocolates there are in this box. So we can say there are X um, amount of uh, small chocolates in this box. Likewise, we have an identical uh, box of chocolates. And in this one, there is going to be X amount of uh, chocolates in here as well. Now, let's say you read the back of the box and uh, you find out that there are actually 100 uh, chocolates uh, in one box. So X is therefore, in this case, is 100. So initially, our variable X was the rough uh, number of uh, chocolates in this box. Uh, however, we then found out that X is actually worth 100. So using X or Y or Z or A or B, we can represent an unknown amount. And this is very helpful. Uh, when we're solving more complicated problems. Now, uh, let's say we have this bar here and we wanna measure the width of our bar. So we don't know exactly how long uh, the width is. So we can say the width is X centimeters long. So once again, we're representing an unknown value with a variable. And now here we've got an identical bar. And again, the width of this one is going to be X centimeters long. So the width of both bars is going to be two X. We have two lots of X. So the width of both bars is two X. And then let's say we add another bar and this bar has a width of one. So the total width is going to be X plus X plus one. Well, X plus X is two X and then plus one. And this is what we call an expression. So an expression is just a collection of uh, terms and variables. So here, two X is our variable and one is a term in our expression. So in this case, it's, it's a number uh, that we know. Uh, let's have a look at another example then. So let's say if we had a square. Now, a square has uh, all length of sides of a square are equal. So for instance, let's say we knew that this square had a length of side five centimeters. Therefore, this side will also be five centimeters as well. In fact, all sides will be five centimeters. Now, if we wanted to work out the area, so that's the space inside of our square, what we would usually do is multiply the width by the height. So the width multiplied by the height, and that would tell us the area inside of our square. So what we would get is area is equal to the width times the height. So five times five. And another way of writing this, so five multiplied by itself is the same as saying five squared, which in this case is 25. So anytime we multiply a number by itself, we are squaring that number. So um, if we were to do six times six, that would be six squared. Uh, which is the same as 36. Now let's say if uh, we didn't know exactly what the width um, and the height of our square was, we can say the width is y uh, centimeters long and therefore the height will also be y centimeters long. So the area of our square is going to be y times y. And we can rewrite this as y squared. So if we simplify y times y, which we should usually do, we end up with y squared, just as five times five is five squared, y times y is y squared. 
Now, if we were to put an identical rect uh, square next to this one, so we know the area of this one is y squared. So the area of this one must also be y squared. So in total, the total area is going to be two lots of y squared. So the total area is going to be equal to 2y squared. Uh, and we'll look at this in more detail in later examples. All right. Now let's have a look at this rectangle here. Now with a rectangle, the length of sides are different. So let's say, uh, again, we didn't know what this width was. We can say this width is um, x. So sticking with our conventional x and y uh, variable. So the width is x, the height is y. Well, once again, the area is going to be x times y. But when we multiply variables, uh, we, we get rid of the multiplication sign. So x times y is simply x y. So if we simplify x times y, we end up with x y. So that's the area of our rectangle, fully simplified. Um, however, we may have to find the perimeter as well. So find an expression for the perimeter of the rectangle. So we have this width being x, so the opposite width will be identical. Therefore, we can represent the length of side here as x. And the height is also going to be y on this side as well. Now, the perimeter is the distance around the shape. So we need to add all the length of side. So we would have to add x to y to x to y again. So I'm going to write this as x plus uh, y plus x plus y. Now we can simplify this. So the perimeter simplified. Well, I've got x and another x. I've got two lots of x's. So we can write that as 2x, two lots of x's is 2x, plus two lots of y's. And that would be our final answer. And we can't simplify this any further. You might be tempted to write this as 4xy, but that's not correct because as we said, this would be the same as four times x times y. Remember, when we multiply variables, the multiplication sign goes away. So if you add 4xy, that means four times x times y. Whereas here, we're adding the length of size. So we're saying two lots of x plus two lots of y. And this can't be simplified anymore. So this would be wrong. So I'm going to rub that out. So please make sure you don't make that mistake. So the area is x times y, the width times the height, which is xy. The perimeter is all the length of sides added together. So x plus y plus x plus y, we end up with two lots of x plus two lots of y. All right, let's uh, do another example. But this time, now we're going to use uh, letters. So like I said, if we do a times b, so one variable times another variable, uh, and we were asked to simplify this, well, this would simply be a b. It just makes life easier when you're doing long uh, algebraic calculation. So a times b is the same as a b. So we simply eliminate the multiplication sign. Uh, what if we had then y plus y plus y? Now, um, here we just need to say how many y's we have. Well, we have three lots of y's, so that's three y. So y plus y plus y is three lots of y's. Uh, and then if we had a times a, so we did this in an earlier example, um, a variable multiplied by itself, but we're saying we are squaring this. So that's going to be a squared. Now you may be tempted to write uh, a times a as 2a, but that's wrong because 2a is 2 times a. So remember, when we multiply a variable with a number or a variable with another variable, uh, we simply get rid of the multiplication sign. So again, if we had, like we did initially, a times b, that would be a b. Now, by that logic, you might be asking yourself, well, a times a, why can't we write that as a a? Well, I suppose we could, but we want to simplify this 
so that it's nice and easy to work with when we're doing long calculations. So a times a, rather than writing a a, uh, we would simply write a squared. A lot easier to work with. Imagine if you had lots of a squareds. This is far easier to write than a a plus a a plus a a. So just be uh, mindful of that. All right, now b times b times b. Well, when we cube a number, so for instance, if we had two times two times two, well, we could rewrite this as two cubed. So b times b times b is the same as b cubed. And then we get to this stage here. So a times a times b. Well, we know a times a is a squared, and then times b. But once again, as we're multiplying the two variables, we can simply get rid of the multiplication sign. So a squared times b would simply be a squared b. So a times a times b is a squared b. When we simplify it, let's have a go at another one. Now, a divided by b. Now, in algebra, rather than writing a divided by b, again, to make life easier for ourselves, we write our divisions as a fraction. So that would be the same as a over b. So um, again, a fraction is essentially a division problem. So for instance, four over two is the same as four divided by two, which is the same as uh, two. So A divided by B is the same as A over B. So whenever we have a division problem, we write that division as a fraction. All right, so here's a summary of the rules I've just gone through. So you can pause the video and have a read of these uh, and make notes. Okay, and now let's move on. So let's test your understanding. So uh, which one of the three options is the correct one? So B times B, you can pause the video and have a go at this. Uh, can it be 2B? Well, 2B is two times B, but we don't have two times B, we have B times B. So in other words, we're squaring B. So the correct answer would be B squared. Now, BB is not necessarily wrong, but in terms of how we write algebraic notation, B squared would be the correct notation. Um, all right, let's move on to the next one. So A plus B plus C. Now we have option one, which is A, B, C. But remember, A, B, C is simply A times B times C. So it can't be this because we're adding the terms together. Then we have option number two, A plus B plus C. Well, that's it. We can't simplify this any further. None of them are like terms. So if we had, for instance, A plus A plus B, well, we've got two lots of A's. So that would be 2A and one lots of b, so it would be 2a plus b. So we could simplify this further, but over here, because there are no like terms, a, b, and c are not like terms, we can't simplify this any further. So two would be the correct uh, option. All right, let's move on to another one. So two times c times d, hopefully uh, we should be comfortable with this. Now you might say it's two times c, d. Now, um, that's partially correct, but it's not fully simplified because we can still eliminate this multiplication sign. So rather than saying two times CD, we can simply say option two, two CD, because two CD means two times C times D. And then this would be totally wrong because we're not adding two to CD, we are multiplying CD by two. So two CD has to be the correct option. All right, let's have a look at another one. So x divided by y, um, option one, that's y over x. Uh, option two, that's x over y, or option three, x, y. Now we know it's definitely not x, y, because x, y is x times y, but we have x divided by y. So it's got to be one of these two fractions, but it's going to be this one over here because x comes first. So x becomes our numerator and y becomes our denominator. So x divided by y is going to be x over y, not y over x. All right, brilliant guys. So now it's 
uh, your turn. Actually, we've got a couple more um, before we do some independent uh, exercises. So we've got free EF. What is that going to be? So free plus E plus F. Um, well, it can't be this because free plus E plus F, these are all unlike terms. So we can't simplify this any further. This stays as it is. Three times E times F, this is the correct answer because three uh, times E can be written as three E and then times F can be written as uh, three E F. So again, we can get rid of the multiplication sign. All right, brilliant. Now it's your turn guys. So simplify the following expressions using uh, what you've learned about algebraic notation. So we can have a uh, go at these. Uh, you can pause the video first, write them down in your exercise book, uh, and then you can play the video again and then check the answer. So I'm going to go through them now. So we've got three lots of eight plus four lots of eight. Well, in total, we've got seven lots of eight. Here we have A terms and B terms, so A variables and B variables. Uh, a plus 2A, well, that's three lots of A, plus the B. So that's going to be 3A plus B. And then again, we've got C variables and B variable. Uh, so over here, C plus 2C is going to be three lots of C and then plus three lots of B. Now over here, we have an A term, so 3A, and then we've got four plus two. Well, four plus two is six. So we get three, eight plus six. And over here, we've got C plus C plus C. Now remember, that's not C times C times C. You might be tempted to write C cubed. Uh, C cubed would be correct for C times C times C, but for C plus C plus C, well, that's just three lots of C plus one D. Now we move on to the multiplication. Uh, and this is going to be, well, two times A, that's simply 2A. Five times B, well, that's simply 5B. C times D, again, we eliminate the multiplication sign, so that's CD. And then 2E times F, well, that's 2EF. And then over here, we've got 3A times 4B. Now, 3 times 4, we know that's 12. And then we're left with the A and the B, so that's 12 lots of a b now two times four is eight and then h times h well any variable multiplied by itself it's being squared so we get eight h squared and then six times three well that's 18 and then a times a is a squared and then we're left with the b so we get 18 a squared b and then over here we get two a times A, well, A times A is A squared, so we get 2A squared. And these are our final answers. Mark your work, check them, make the corrections, uh, and hopefully, guys, you found this lesson uh, useful. So just to summarize, remember, uh, we went through this earlier in the lesson, but we can write AB in place of A times B, 3Y in place of Y plus Y plus Y, or, if we had three times y, where well, that's simply three y. So again, three lots of y, and here we're saying three lots of y. Uh, and then a squared in place of a times a, a cubed in place of a times a times a, a squared b in place of a times a, which is a squared times b, giving us a squared b, and then we write division problems as a fraction. So a divided by b is the same as a over B. Right, guys, I hope you found this lesson useful. I wish you a very nice day, and I look forward to seeing you soon. Bye.